This Saturday marks 20 years since the September 11th terrorist attacks. Ten years ago, a book was published featuring the letters that family members wrote to loved ones who were lost on that terrible, terrible day. It is called The Legacy Letters. We met up with three young people whose letters to their fathers were included in that book, and they reflected on the past 20 years and shared their stories of resilience. Olivia, you were 10. On you were four. Lauren, you were eight um, on 9-11. I just want you each briefly to tell us what you remember about that day and the days following. Olivia, you start, please. Yeah, um, I can walk you step by step through the 11th. Um, it was one of the first few days of middle school for me. Olivia Perez's father, Anthony Perez, was working as a technical specialist on the 103rd floor of the North Tower on September 11th. Kids were being pulled left and right to go home early. It's fifth period and I'm in orchestra and um, they wound up pulling a kid and like, come on, miss, tell us, please tell us. And she's like, I don't know, I'm not supposed to, but okay. You know, the World Trade Center had been attacked and it was just an instinctual, I mean, the sinking feeling in my stomach. You knew your dad was there? Yeah, and, and I knew he was no longer here. Lauren, what do you remember about so that day? So I have almost the opposite of experience. If she can walk you step through step through her day, I've got five minutes. Lauren Charette's father, Mark Charette, usually worked in his office in New Jersey. But on September 11th, he was holding an annual planning meeting on the 100th floor of the North Tower. My mother knew he'd gone into the city that day. She sat me and my, the older of my two brothers down and told us that the towers had been hit. I know I asked her something. I couldn't tell you what it was. Mm -hmm. um, and then I know several days later, and this conversation I don't really remember very well, that she must have sat us down a couple days later. It was definitely the weekend and told us he was dead. The only memory I have in between about it is somewhat recess when we still weren't sure because I know somebody was saying something and I know I got super upset. On you were four. Yeah, so my account of, the, the, of that like, very day and the days that follow is even going to be even more vague and hazy. Um, but I do recall that my father tried to, to wave at me, yelling my name, telling me to wave through the window of the school bus, which was something that he never, never really recalled he did otherwise. An Nguyen's father, Ken Nguyen, who lived through the Vietnam War, worked in the Navy Command Center at the Pentagon. I noticed that my father didn't come home. I honestly thought that he would come back at some point. And it was a, a couple of weeks later when the funeral came. When I saw my father's casket was pushed into the uh, cremation chamber, that's mm -hmm. when I knew that he's not gonna come back. Mm -hmm. It took even a couple more years after that, even to thoroughly understand that he's not gonna come back and try to live my life mm -hmm. and develop my identity mm -hmm. without my father. On Lauren and Olivia, marked the 10th anniversary of 9-11 by writing legacy letters to their fathers. Dear Dad, you are the greatest man I could ever know. I'm sure any girl who loves her father as much as I do would say the same. But from the short time I got to spend with you, I know you were the greatest person alive. Now that another 10 years have passed, they look back at those letters, reflected on what they mean to them today. What did you want to say in that letter? You know, I don't even, it was cathartic. I want him to be proud. I want him to know that though his life was cut short, that he is leaving a lasting impact on the planet. Um, he was my everything, you know? There is still a part of me that has this very sick, twisted hope that he's sitting somewhere on a beach in Mexico drinking a beer mm -hmm. and watching us from afar, mm -hmm. that, that he got out safe when in reality he was working above where the planes crashed and was not, didn't stand a chance. Mm -hmm. But in a way, is it, some, is it comforting on some level, even though you know it's not true and you've acknowledged that, to sort of fantasize it maybe, just maybe? 100%. Is it comforting to you? Oh yes, very comforting. God, Olivia, that's tough. Yeah. <laughs> it's tough. On, you said that in your letter that you were angry, that you discovered anger. What were you angry about? 
So the anger part was trying to understand that why my father died such in vain and basically why the people that, that committed this heinous act mm -hmm. would create such a tremendous impact that I will have to endure for the rest of my life, especially my childhood, would, it would never be the same. My favorite photo of us is the one taken on my third birthday. You let me sit on your shoulders and we laughed and looked so happy. I also like the picture of me wearing a military uniform that you bought for me from one of the stores inside the Pentagon. I am saddened and sometimes angry that I was forced to grow up without a father. I had learned about terrorism and the war on terror. It's really painful when I try and, when I realize that I'm the I'm a, literally a victim of, of that situation. Yeah. It's it's really tough. That it, it like, struck you definition in a very is, personal yeah, way. Definition is one thing, but the visceral reaction and basically living it is another. I know for a lot of people it's just a word. Exactly. It's just a word or it's something that you see on TV. TV. You a lot of people will will not understand what the word terrorism means until you're directly impacted by that. And that's something that it's, it, it, it's, even, it's even hard to describe. It's even now. Even now. Even now. Lauren, um, what struck me about your letter, it was a series of questions. And I loved your questions because it was something that we could all relate to. I'm graduating in June, will you clap for me? Do you think I've made good friends? I stopped going to church, doesn't matter. When you get this, will you write back? Do you miss me as much as I miss you? Will you be at my wedding? Do you think I'm picking the right career? Do you still love me? Most of all, I wanted to ask, am I still your little girl? Still your little girl. That question really got to me because I think every daughter at some point asks that question of her father. Why did you decide to write a series of questions? I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with this. And so I decided I was just gonna free write it. I was gonna sit down and I was gonna find a place to start. And being my senior year of high school, I'm like, how do I write something? Well, you start with your question, right? You start yeah. with the thing you want the answer to and then you find your evidence. But once I found one question, I just kept finding more questions. Your questions really got to me. The, the simplicity of your questions really got to me. And the last question just sort of had me on the floor. It really did. Because it was such a, it was a haunting question to me because you can't get the answers to any of the questions, but they're all questions that we want to know the answers to. So I shuffled it, I think, a couple times, but that one was always last. It was always last. That was the place to end it. That was the one I wanted the answer to the most. Did he used to say to you, you're my little girl? Did he used to say that you to know, you? He might have. I don't remember. Yeah. I do remember some of the things he used to say to me. What do you remember that he used to say to you? Um, I remember um, mostly that he said, I love you a lot. Mostly, I love you. How do you all feel about 9-11 anniversaries? You know, it's a time when the nation stops and pauses and remembers, and certainly on the big anniversaries, 5, 10, 15, and now 20. Is the anniversary something that you dread does it give you some kind of comfort that it's that it's remembered or are you just thinking it's more than just a day for us olivia um the 11th anniversary was the hardest one for me when i realized i've lived my life longer with without my father mm. than i have with um and you know i've i've made great friends with other children of 9 11 and we all agree august is the hardest month of the year august not september um it's that lead up to x amount of years ago my dad was still here with me the anniversary for me it's taken me 20 years but mm. i'm finally at a place where i celebrate my father mm. and i do things that he would like and i do things that bring me peace but yeah. anniversaries are hard because that's when you get all those text messages. I'm thinking of you. You know, your father would be proud of you. And 
it couldn't be a stranger you've never met. Your father would be proud of you. But hearing those words mm -hmm. just really, I think, rocks you. <laughs> yes, you're right. August is harder than September. Or even the first week of September, it's the run up, it's the media, it's the constant like in your faceness. But also for me at this point, like I don't miss him any more on the 11th than on the 12th and on the 13th than a random day in April than mm. whenever. So for me, the anniversary feels more like it's about other people than it's about me mm. or even in some ways him. I'm fascinated to hear from you both that August is harder than September because in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, that just must be, September must be terrible. But it makes sense when you say August is hard because you, you guys know it's coming. Right. On you said you promised in your letter to your dad that you would make him proud when you became a man. Do you think you've done that? Yeah, it's 10 years later, now I'm about to turn 24. I feel like I did, grad school is about to be done, I'm about to be finishing up in December. And that degree was an honor from my father because he didn't get the chance to complete his. You all talked really about making your dads proud. Olivia? I honor my father every day by doing something stupid to make someone smile. And that was Anthony Perez in a nutshell. I go into work every day with that because at the end of the day, my, my father went to work and he never left. I'm still questioning it. I still don't have the answer. Um, if you've made your dad proud, you don't have the answer? No. Nah. No? Why not, Lauren? I don't know, every time I ask it of myself, I'm like, well, what am I doing with my life now? And it's like, eh, I like your answer. I think I definitely make like, people's lives better. So yeah. I'd like to think he'd be proud of that, mm -hmm. but I don't have the answer. Lauren, the fact that you're still here and you're carrying on your dad's legacy is really more than enough. I wrote about closure in my letter mm -hmm. and I sit here and I listen to everyone and I don't know what closure is anymore. Is it having a, a place for me to go visit where he's buried? Is it coming to peace with what happened? Is it forgiving the individuals who, who caused this? Is it carrying on his legacy? I, I don't know anymore. I don't, I don't know what closure is. Um, I've worked really hard to get to where I am to overcome this terrible thing. And does that mean it's closure? Maybe. Mm -hmm. Does it does it mean I'm, I don't have moments of utter weakness? Mm -hmm. Some days it's just impossible to get out of bed. I can imagine. Have you forgiven? You mentioned forgiveness. Have you forgiven the people behind this? Carrying hatred in your heart doesn't help anyone. It's exhausting. It's not worth it. And they held a lot of hatred for whatever their reasons were. And I feel bad for that. And it breaks my heart that we all grew up without our parents for that. Mm -hmm. Where do you stand on on forgiveness? On forgiveness? It's for me, in the case of 9-11, forgiveness is, it's a complicated word. Yeah. For me, forgiveness would mean just uh, just giving, just liberate myself the agony and the angst mm. of mm. that the for that the attacks forced me to endure yeah. and understand and process it, and even just never mind try to articulate it to other people. Yeah, yeah. It's difficult. Like, how do you convey something like that? Yeah. Um, so it's always going to make me wonder, like, what was the motivation that, ha that yeah. caused you, that caused those people to have that kind of hatred? How does the hatred become that intense? And I wonder intense. that too. Mm -hmm. Where does forgiveness sit with you, Lauren? So there's, for me, there's two parts. One, like you said, anger is exhausting. I it didn't take me very long to forgive them. Like, I couldn't be that angry. Mm -hmm. um, also, there's that quote, if you can be anything, be kind. I'd like to think that I can be kind. I like to think that that's the most important thing is to be kind to each other. Dad, you are my hero. You are always in my heart. I am so proud to be your son. I promise to be a good student 
and study hard so that when I become a man, I will make you up in heaven happy and proud of me. Love your son. Out of the darkness comes light, and the kids of 9-11, my friends who I now call family, will light the darkness and make the nation shine. But if I could ask for anything, it'd be one measly little meal with you at a diner, just to talk about life, what heaven's like, and how you and all my friends' parents are getting along. Most of all, I'd like to hug you one last time. I love and miss you dearly, Olivia. Have you read what I wrote? Would you go hiking with me? Do you still love me? Most of all, I wanted to ask, am I still your little girl? Forever, Lauren. <laughs>